Okay, uh, I'm Robert Richter. Uh, this presentation is done by Terry and me. He's also in the audience. Uh, we are working at AMD on CXL. There's a second part here, which is uh, done by Srini from Micron. It's about uh, Rust page off offlining. Uh, there, there are lots of slides on, on Rust and I want to go quickly through it and we'll also sk uh, skip some content here to, uh, yeah, yeah, because they are short in time. So CXL Rust, the specification has a couple of features included. There's uh, first error handling for various protocols, uh, now link and um, protocol errors, device errors. Then there is a CXL error injection, poison and Viral handling um, is offered, and there are maintenance uh, event records and commands also available, which are available through the CXL mailbox. And there is also CXL error isolation. The main topic here is on CXL error handling, but um, yeah, some of the features are related to each other. Okay. So. CXL error handling. Uh, we have link and protocol errors here, which are um, uh, using mainly uh, PCI AER. Uh, we need to consider two modes here. I will talk on this a little later. When there's the, the device errors using the event logging facility, the mailbox uh, driver of a, of a device or uh, of a component. And a third part here is Firmware error reporting, there has been some uh, CXL extensions to uh, ACPI uh, um, as well, which also needed to be implemented in the kernel. So link and protocol errors, there's a variety of things that need to be considered and implemented. We have a number of uh, components involved with the two modes that are available. We have a restricted mode and VH mode. So the restricted mode offers the uh, RCH downstream port and upstream ports. And then there is the uh, restricted uh, CXL device, which is uh, uh, showing up as a boot complex integrated endpoint. And in VH mode, all the CXL components are visible through the PCI hierarchy, which are the root ports. Uh, downstream switch and upstream ports, and the, the endpoint also as, as a PCI device. The protocol types supported are CXL IO and uh, CXL cache mem, which is uh, uh, covering the cache and mem protocol. And there are a lot of registered blocks that need to be inspected when an error happens. The first one is the AR error um, a space that, or registers which are in the PCIe configuration space. Then there is also the DVSEC uh, block for the uh, CXL devices and ports, also in the PCIe config space. And additionally, there's the CXL Rust capability, which is uh, the CXL cache mem block in the MMIO space. And this is available through, for all all the components except the host bridge. And all this is using PCI AER, and in the end, the, the kernel generates trace points, and there will be another talk later on EDAC integration, so it could possibly later or in future also be forwarded to the EDAC subsystem. A few words on, on AER. So this is the mechanism used for Error handling for CXL. All CXL components need to support AER. Uh, the I/O errors are locked through the uh, AER extended capability, and the uh, cache mem is using correctable and uncorrect uncorrectable internal AER errors. And once this error uh, triggers, then the CXL Rust capability need to be uh, inspected. There is one challenge in the implementation we discussed yesterday in the PCIe session already, 
which is the board driver implementation for a CXL error handling. We do need uh, basically a custom port driver to uh, further uh, handle the CXL specifics. Uh, but the good thing is uh, PCIAR basically exists in the uh, kernel already. There are a few so, extensions. Sorry, Robert. Hmm? Just, just to ask a quick question. So hmm? for the custom port driver there, uh, how much do we need? Wait, I mean, <laughs> what's actually needed for that? Yeah, if an interrupt triggers, then we need to, to look up the CXL uh, Rust capability. And for that, we need to do, do the mapping between the... Uh, the device and the CXL Rust capability. So, and this 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 is only available in the CXL stack. Okay. Yeah, that needs some thought. Okay. For for rest, for, for restricted modes mode, the things uh, or AR need to be slightly extended here, uh, because the um, devices do not show up in PCI hierarchy. We have. Um, there is the special uh, RCRB, root complex register block, where the AR registers are in, and also the, the Rust capabilities are not mapped through the PCIe member zero, but using the member zero in the uh, register block. And the notification is done through the event collector. So uh, uh, for restricted uh, CXL devices, we need the RC, RCEC implementation here too. So what's done in the kernel? Uh, the AR handling, CXL AR handling and of correctable errors has been extended in 6.2 along with the Rust capability and uh, trace point support. Then 6.3 there was uh, error unmasking to, to enable the intermaps for the uh, Rust capabilities. And restricted mode for downstream ports were implemented or added to 6.5 and 6.7. And there is a um, patch set posted by Terry on uh, port device support for uh, ports in VH mode. Device errors. The device um, may report poison viral, non-memory errors, which is uh, the last section that I talked about, uh, Lincoln protocol errors and memory errors. The memory errors itself are, is using the CXL specifics of event logging and signaling. Uh, that means uh, for errors, the general event logs is used and the notifications using uh, the MSI, MSIX device interrupt. So event locking not only uses uh, error handling, but also uh, oh, there, is an, there is an interface here for the mailbox. Um, the errors or the events are used for reporting errors uh, and also for requests and responses between CXL pro, uh, components, which is used uh, in DCD also. So the membox commands, there are access membox, membox commands to read the event log. And the status here that all the all kinds of events are supported in the kernel and access. Uh, there is DCD support ongoing, uh, but no switch, uh, physical switch support yet. What went into the kernel in 5.16, there was very early the mailbox su support added. And 6.3, uh, we had the event logging, uh, including interrupt support. There is an extension for poison list, uh, in, uh, um, uh, list and injection. In 6.4, uh, 6L background command execution for the event log was implemented in 6.5, and in 6.10, we IO control of the mailbox commands has been extended to also support error handling or the error commands. Firmware support. This is uh, ACPI using the uh, CPI records has been added and uh, GS sources. For the records, we have 
uh, support for all the agents that, that are available in both modes. The error record includes basically the AR configuration space that is uh, yeah, uh, part of the AR error or a GS CPR error, uh, error record. There is the, also the DVSEC space available and the uh, CXL RAS capability, which is coming from firmware then. And for the components, we have the record was extended to use or to also uh, include the event record as specified in the CXL specification. In addition, we need uh, operating system capability handling for firmware basically um, to enable the uh, uh, OS first mode. So there are also some uh, changes, in, uh, there have been also some changes needed in the kernel. And then also same here, uh, same for OS first uh, kernel trace point support to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to have a, uh, to, to uh, uh, report the errors to the kernel. So here are the achievements. First, the uh, OSC support, uh, finally in 6.7, then CPR event decoding in the ACPI driver in 6.2. Error injection has been added in 6.9, and CPR uh, CXL driver support in 6.8 and 6.10. Uh, poison and oh, but sorry. Mm. Before we move on, mm -hmm. uh, a really basic question on the error testing thing is, uh, also the error reporting side of things is, mm -hmm. how easy is it to test? Because should we say error injection platforms are usually a pain in the backside? Yeah, there, there are some sort of injections possible, uh, but not always implemented. Terry, do you have something uh, to add? Uh, job for tomorrow here. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I think also yeah. in, in QMO there's some support of error injection. Yeah. yeah, what I did with some of the CPR stuff is I literally just hacked something into debugfs mm -hmm. and then didn't submit the patch for that. So Over there. I think it's worth calling out, mainly because he sat there um, very briefly. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, we, we do have some work that Morrow's taken over where we're trying to add to QMU the ability to inject pretty much any error mm -hmm. uh, through the ACPI yes. pods. Yeah. Um, we haven't, yeah, I, I actually dropped the CXL support for that because it was changing too quickly, but we'll bring that back. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, it's, yeah, getting the basic infrastructure in place, but it's going fairly well. So that should solve that problem. Ooh, he was fast. <laughs> My throne's terrible. So, so two things, uh, so for error reporting, and how well it works um, in practice. I've, I found that any cache errors are pretty self-evident when the machine, you know, machine checks and throws some really bizarre errors out of the CPUs. Um, question about the firmware, though. So, on like the vendor side, how many vendors are you aware of that have signed up for this type of ACPI support? Because in my experience with certain vendors that will be unnamed, um, their CXL support and ACPI is leaving a lot to be desired, where there's like flat out problems with mapping devices, and Dan knows a little bit about this, but um, where, where it's just flat out broken. Yeah, well, I, I at least know one vendor, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. I mean, we, we, we have we have one one big vendor that just is, is just broken, and then other vendors mm -hmm. that are like you know hold my whatever and watch this, and then they can fix it. So a at least anything can fix in firmware some, somehow. So, um, <laughs> I guess it not so much depends on the vendor, but also to the um, eventual distributor like half a vendor HP or mm -hmm. or you name it, because these are those who tend to be very insistent on firmware first modes on the grounds that they have their management agent BMC, you name it, and we want to see everything. Those hardware vendors currently implementing that stuff are not that shocked about it because, well, they don't have BMCs as such. Mm -hmm. And so they are not that worried and do whatever they've been told. I guess the real push will be coming once the system go live on real hardware and then we'll yeah. see a push for that. Thank you. Um, back to uh, the error in injection question. Um, of course, a lot of that is platform dependent. Um, using, like, for instance, the EINJ module. Um, but we also have a, a recent upstream patch that uh, adds injection support using the SysFS files. 
Um, now, I don't know if it, how complete it is for different components, but it's a good start such that it'll be independent of the platform and should work for QMU as well, is what I would expect. Um, I can, no, actually, uh, Ben on our team, um, upstream that, that was for the uh, error isolation in order to yeah, take down the upstream like port. I'm sorry, the downstream port. And then I'm also aware that, that there's a compliance DOE in the spec, that, but I'm not aware of anybody having enabled the enabling for that. But you, you can inject errors via that, I know, but I I'm not aware of any tools for that. Yeah, you, you can inject a very, very small subset of stuff. That thing is mm, not super useful. Um, we do, in theory, have Kimu support for it. In practice, it's not wired up to do anything. It just fakes it. Which, which tool is that? This, this is the compliance DOE. But no, I think the idea is that no one will ship a part with the compliance DOE turned on. So unless you can get a prototype, well, I guess maybe we can get prototypes. But okay, so uh, I'm not sure if you know me, but I'm the author of Rust Demon and one of the Rust reviewers. So uh, and we've been doing this work as uh, Jonathan mentioned on Kimu. The idea is that we are adding a script that can inject any kind of CPR record. So it can even be used by, to generate fuzzy testing. And uh, with that, we can inject not only CXL, but also other kinds of errors, and even try to crack the kernel by injecting some <laughs> defector packages there. Mm -hmm. So maybe it would be interesting if you could take a look on our work, and it could be helpful to check the, 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 the development. Thanks. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but back to your question about uh, vendors and their various uh, former first support. I mean, my entire idea with, with CXL is that the kernel would eventually obviate the need. Like, yes, yes, we can interrupt with the firmware first, but, but the kernel can, can yeah. supplement when firmware first is not there. Um, I think I've seen some people saying, oh, no, we need firmware first. I mean, so if it's there, great. But if it's not, Linux should fill the gap. Yeah, there's OC support hmm, to uh, enable OS first. Hmm. The kernel rules all. Okay. Yeah, we need to hurry up because uh, 17 minutes already. So poison viral, basically, there's the uh, uh, there's just only one thing that needs to be added here, which is a media poison, uh, poison and management a mailbox command. Everything else is handled through the uh, generic memory uh, management system. And, oh, I'm sorry, I was on the first long, wrong slide. So for poison viral, and for yeah, CXL isolation, we have this posted patch set from Ben, uh, but that needs uh, a user. And that's all on our handling. Uh, so, uh, Srini, are you there? I hope he is. Can you try to speak? Is he not muted? We cannot hear you. Okay, okay. now am I able? Yeah. Thank you. I will skip. Uh, yeah, slide. thank you. Uh, sorry? Was there a question? Yeah, I, I okay. will handle the, uh, no. let me know when I need to switch slides. Sure, sure. sure. Uh, firstly, uh, th thank you, Robert and Jonathan uh, for, for helping in the match uh, of the PPT. Um, uh, can we go to the first slide, the next slide? Yeah, so the agenda is like, well, how is uh, um, the uh, device fault domains or the error sources and error coverage error reporting uh, specific to uh, DRAM events, uh, which is specific to this uh, page offline. And uh, we have this PFA, uh, predictive failure analysis algorithm, implemented in uh, RAS daemon. And th th this is already you know, uh, kind of offloaded 
uh, in the CXL type 3 devices as a part of advanced CVME and which can leverage to do page offline. Uh, that is what we of what we are going to discuss. Can we go to next slide, please? Yeah, so uh, typically these are the fault domains um, uh, on a CXL link. Uh, either we will have CXL link faults and the memory faults. Uh, the the area of the primary focus would be for this discussion is memory faults. Um, uh, memory faults including data, uh, single bit, row bit, uh, different like row, bank, and device specific. Um, can we go to next slide, please? Yes, so here I want to spend a bit of time. So the errors uh, from the memory, you know, broadly categorized or, or broadly of this, uh, or, or, or these uh, primarily uh, see, mo most happening is uh, uh, single bit error, uh, which can be recovered using ECC, demand script and patrol script. And uh, there are cases like, you know, even if it is corrected by ECC, it can be persistent, then we can use uh, page offlining and row, row failures, uh, bank failures, device single bit failure. And the last one is like, you know, you have a device failure, a multi-device failure, which we need a hard page for offlining. From top to bottom, the occurrence of errors, you know, the probability is less. At the top row, it is more uh, probability compared to the uh, bottom row. Uh, can we go to next slide, please? Um, so th this is an existing you know, CXL error reporting uh, that we uh, that we have. Uh, ATFT device uh, would log the errors into um, a logging, and then it triggers the interrupt to the OS, and OS uh, will 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 uh, create a uh, trace events for that. And the user space applications can develop these trace events. And so far, we what we have for DRAM events is uh, reporting. Uh, uh, for the uh, for the DRAM event, so there is uh, lacking of acting on the error. Uh, that's where you know uh, this this uh, uh, this this what we are proposing can help. Uh, can we move to next slide, please? So yeah, yeah. So this 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 is what I was talking about the the predictive failure analysis algorithm that we have in the uh, RAS daemon, and uh, similar you know we have in the CXL spec, uh, advanced CVME, we call uh, uh, section 829. Uh, we have this advanced CVME. Uh, what it does is that uh, the device, uh, uh, type 2 device, uh, can can have the thresholds be, being configured and, and the time uh, and the uh, uh, refresh cycles. And based on that, that um, after these many you know, uh, events uh, within the device, it can, it can, it can trigger the even to the uh, um, to the voice. Uh, what we are try trying to do here is like we are, we are uh, you know segregating the uh, events and, and, and reporting uh, to the uh, operating system at once. So uh, that is advanced EME slash you know PFA. Uh, can we go to next slide, please? So here, what we uh, like, what, what we can leverage is like, we have a DRM event uh, when we get a CE, uh, the correctable address. For that CE, we have a physical address associated, and from the uh, from the device address to you know host address, the mean the mapping being done, and we have the uh, mapping in the in the Linux kernel itself, and we are we already you know having that. Being exposed to the as a trace event, so now we have the uh, HPA at the user space level for the given record. Uh, with that HPA, uh, what what we can do, we can do a page offline in Rust event, and uh, we also need a one more input is whether this threshold has been tri triggered or not. Uh, if there is no threshold or if there is no support in the advanced CMME, uh, this sim similar thing can be done using you know EDAC. But here, the advantage of you know having you know, thresholds is the device has more knowledge of the errors and it it can be more accurate, you know, rather than doing it in the software and having some thresholds. Um, can we go? Can we move to next slide, please? So yeah, so once the we get uh, uh, see uh, whatever the first four point uh, which is already exist, and this is one what what we want to you know uh, have it in the uh, RAS daemon and also. Uh, uh, then I want to propose some interface in the Linux also to make it easy. Um, so once the CE threshold set and and if it has a 
corrected error uh, what we do is in the ras demand will will try to uh, indicate that uh, it requires a page offline based on the configuration in ras demon uh, it can be a, a, a soft offline or a hard page offline uh, can we go to next slide please so this is you know i'll go you know what we can add uh, these are the uh, we we are getting the hpa uh, from the trace and having a record of it and we are storing it uh, for persistent uh, record and also we are we are we are we are reporting instantly apart from that what we are looking at is whether this is an uh, corrected error and if the threshold is met and instantly what we are trying to do is in the in the last line we are instantly indicating that this is a good candidate or uh, you know this address can be page offline and any questions over we, we've got a minute or two for a couple of questions, I think. So, is that? I think that's your final slide, is it? Yeah, yeah thought so. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, we had this concern about whether 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 Ras Daemon should grow support for native CXL error records or whether the CXL driver should be translating memory events into the existing memory error records that Ras Daemon already understands. Um, is there a benefit either way? Uh, like, one, one of them actually pushes the problem to user space. Um, uh, uh, from Ras Daemon's point of view, it doesn't really matter if this is a hardware first or a firmware first event. It can handle both cases. Uh, in the case, uh, we, we actually use uh, traces to get the event there as a Zimon. So whatever it is input, it can be handled the same way internally there. So I think one thing here is that some of the information can be a lot richer than goes through the normal algorithm. So, so for some of this predictive stuff, if you aren't doing it on the hardware, you want to push as much information as possible up to whatever algorithm is running. So, um, one question, uh, how complex would be for the kernel uh, to notify the device that uh, a certain range of addresses has been uh, offline? So uh, we have yeah, an interface. Uh, yeah, there is an echo. So we, uh, we have CFS interface to indicate the soft offline and page offline. RAS daemon uh, is, is currently using those interfaces. That is, uh, for RAS daemon, it, it just requires what HPA that need to be on, offline. The point is, is uh, the best is to warn user space because then you can have your policies on user space and not on the kernel space. So if you do an internal loop at the kernel for it, for example, to offload some pages, it means that you are actually placing your business uh, decisions at the kernel is usually not something that we would want to do. I think what Dan was asking was slightly different, which was more that when we've done the offline, yeah. the, the till the hardware, not have what, about why does the device care? The device can optimize some uh, media management uh, operations. Okay. Or, uh, so stuff that's kind of lighter weight than, say, PPR or sparing, but or some. Avoid sparing, uh, OK. That's yeah. an existing yeah. I mean, it, I was thinking sparing. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to do. So you could actually fix the page. Well, we have the slight snag. I don't think there's a hardware-defined interface to do it yet. No. So those of us who are in the consortium may see one shortly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we, we, we still need an interface to tell the hardware. If, yeah. if it's useful to the hardware to optimize its information that's easy to squirt down, um, yeah. Well, we, we, yeah. So I should have added to that at the beginning that we won't discuss anything that's been discussed in the standards right. organization. Right. However, this has not been discussed in the right. standards organization, so we can merrily talk about it. Right. And, and now that we can <laughs> talk about it, we can continue to talk about it, even if the consortium talks about it. Absolutely. Well, yeah, as long as we don't right. convey any information. But yes, we haven't had to call that out yet today, but I will stop people if they do verge into that stuff. Right. Um, but so far, we haven't. So thank I you mean, very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.